Introducing Resultant Forces by kscience.com. This car is stationary. It's currently got a force acting downwards due to the gravitational field strength acting on the car's mass, and this weight is 2,000 newtons. And the equal and opposite force of the car's weight is 2,000 newtons going upwards. This car is stationary because there is no driving force. The driving force has now been applied to the car and this driving force is 3,000 newtons to the right or forwards in the car's case. Because there is a driving force and because there are air particles surrounding the car, there is going to be air resistance as the car moves through the air. And the air resistance force in the opposite direction to the driving force is 1,000 newtons. So to work out the resultant force, you must do the driving force, which is 3,000 newtons, minus the resistance force, which in this case is air resistance, which is 1,000 newtons, which gives you a resultant force of 2,000 newtons forwards. And the resultant force acting vertically on the car is going to be 2,000 newtons minus 2,000 newtons of the car's weight, which will give you a resultant force of 0 newtons. So because the force is 2,000 newtons in a forwards direction, the car now has a resultant force acting on it, which means the car is accelerating. The car is accelerating. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So now as the car increases its speed due to acceleration, there's going to be an increase in air resistance acting on the car. So if the air resistance acting on the car increases from 1,000 newtons, acting on the car increases from 1,000 newtons to a force of 3,000 newtons, we can now calculate the new resultant force acting on the car. So to calculate the new resultant force, you do 3,000 newtons of the driving force, minus the 3,000 newtons of the air resistance. This gives you a resultant force of zero newtons. So that means there is no resultant force acting on the car. But because there's a driving force acting on the car, the car is moving. So the car is moving at a steady speed. Just because the resultant force is zero newtons doesn't mean the car is stationary. A resultant force of zero means the car is stationary or it is moving with a steady speed, so the car is not accelerating. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So the frictional forces acting in opposition to the driving force increases from 3,000 newtons to 4,000 newtons. This is because a braking force has been applied to the wheels by the brakes. So to calculate the new resultant force acting on the car, you do 3,000 newtons of the driving force minus 4,000 newtons of the oppositional frictional force to the driving force, which now gives you a resultant force of 1,000 newtons backwards. 1,000 newtons backwards or minus 1,000 newtons because it's a vector quantity. Because there is now a resultant force acting on the car, the car is no longer moving at a steady speed. The car is now decelerating. The car is decelerating because there is a negative resultant force acting on the car. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Press pause to practice using those key words. 
the answers will follow. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Visit kscience.com for more free videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.